Hey guys, so I am here. We are finally doing our review of the 230 Kabari. We've had this tent for, good grief, almost six months now. And we use it every day. So this is a real review of how it's holding up, how it's doing, and would we still recommend it? Hey, my name is Jeremy. I'm here to talk about the 230 Kabari rooftop tent. It is the hard shell and we've had this thing for six months. So I believe that we can now do a good official review on this product for you guys. So let's talk about 230 in the first place. Excellent company to work with. If you have questions, they get back to you right away. Uh, we've met and talked to Justin and Wayne and Matt and all of them are incredible people. They truly care about the customer. They truly care about standing behind their products. Uh, if there's any issues or misunderstanding about the products, they're more than happy to address those. Uh, their warranty process is incredible. Uh, we've actually been working with them for a little while and any things or concerns that we've had, um, if it's necessary, they go to the factory right away and get the changes made. But we absolutely love working with them. They stand behind their product. They're a great company. So the 230 Kabari, you can mount it forwards or backwards. Uh, and that's by the hinge. If you're putting it on a vehicle, normally they recommend that you put the hinges forward. Um, that way you can put your ladders at the back and you can get up and down pretty easily from back there. For us, we mounted it reversed. So the hinges are at the rear of our off-road trailer. And that is because we have a built-in ladder on the trailer. So there's no reason for us to carry the additional ladder for the 230 Kabari. So we can't speak about that piece. But um, we mounted it this way. We do not carry any ladder. So it's just six tires on the ground. We can pick up and move. We can spin for the wind uh, or solar, whatever we want to do. And we absolutely love it. When we decided we wanted to do solar, we knew that we could fit three of the Renogy 175 watt glass panels on the roof. They fit perfectly, by the way. And that was going to put us just barely over the weight of the struts. So had a conversation with Wayne and Justin. And while they do not offer a solution currently for that, uh, we made sure that we knew where our weights were and where they were going to be with the solar. We have since replaced their, the struts that they have on this tent are 400 in, so 400 Newtons. We have found uh, 450 in struts and they work perfectly. So now our tent is right back to being perfect. The boys can easily lift it up and down. The struts actually pick the tent up itself now. It's not hard to close at all. Like that's what a lot of people's concern is, is jumping up in shocks from the 400 to the 450. A lot of people are concerned that it would be harder to close. It's actually not, it's really easy to close still. Um, replacing the struts on this tent from the 400 to the 450 was very simple. So we'll put the company we use for the struts on the screen and down in the description. But basically all we had to do was the, the metal part that went, that was screwed. Yeah. So the easiest thing to do would be to show you. So this piece right here, this metal piece is the original piece for the original struts. This strut actually screws in and unscrews. So all we had to do was unscrew it here and up at the top. And then once we unscrewed those with the new struts being a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger what we had to do is we had to actually unzip the top of the tent from the hard shell 
And that's very simple. It's just a zipper, big old fat zipper. You just unzip it all the way around. You lift the tent up just a little bit more. You go ahead and screw in both sides of the strut. Then you lower the tent back down a little bit, zip it back on and you're good to go, it's that simple. They only cost $40 a piece for the new upgraded struts. So if you're putting uh, cargo boxes or bicycles or like us, you wanna put solar panels or a big combination of any of them up there, then uh, you can get the upgraded 450 in struts and they're super easy to do. Uh, they, ship two, they ship two to three days UPS. So really happy and impressed with that. So yeah, we absolutely love it. Uh, for us being full time, we have to have solar and putting it on top of the hard shell on top of the Kabari has been perfect for us. Uh, it allows us to never have to plug in. It's the only option to put it on this trailer since the configuration of the trailer. And we're trying to get away from carrying ground panels. We still have one, but uh, having the 525 watts on the roof of the Kabari, it's incredible. I mean, we're producing three kilowatts a day. Uh, as long as we're not shaded, we can produce three, three plus, just over 3000 watts in a day. So three kilowatts. But yeah, we, uh, we did, we used the Kabari roof bars. So the panels are mounted on the bars and the bars are mounted in the tracks on the tent. So there are no screw holes in the tent. I uh, highly recommend doing it that way because of water ingress, but also we have boys who are rambunctious and they jump around and play and we absolutely did not want any screws or screw heads or anything coming through the top of the tent. Uh, you can imagine that could be a big problem. So the bars come in set to two, we use three. So let's talk about the longevity and the quality of the tent. Um, we have four boys and um, they get rambunctious at night. They play around, they wrestle, they jump, they do all the things that boys do. And we have had zero problems with the tent at all. A lot of people's concern about rooftop tents, especially the soft shell ones, are the zippers on the screens and the doors. These are very thick zippers on the screens and the door. And we've had no issues with it. The boys are sometimes a little rough with the zippers, but we've had absolutely no problems with them. Uh, there's no tearing in the screens. There's no nothing, no issues. Um, the boys can easily put up the tent by themselves and they can put in these poles as well. They're not that hard. And then uh, we'll go show you inside the tent, how we have it set up and then the wear and tear on the inside. So this is how we have the tent laid out for our four boys. Our three older boys lay uh, this direction and then our youngest sleeps opposite of them over by the door and his head can either go to the passenger side or the driver's side depending on how we have the trailer leveled. Um, as you can see, this uh, pocket apparatus has not held up. Uh, it's just one thin line of stitching that holds this up here and if you pull it hard enough the seam breaks and so the pockets are still functional enough for the boys so we haven't replaced it but they have ripped every one of them. <laughs> so that is the one thing that has not held up for us. I know that you can replace this uh, just velcros on and off and 230 does have that on their website so if you need to replace it if that happens to yours it's doable uh, inside our our kabari we have two side pockets the boys like to keep their water bottles in here so that they don't fall over and leak all over everything behind these pockets you have a zipper opening that allows you to bring cables in if you need to have electricity run up here. We have used it for a heater up here, although honestly this tent holds heat so much better than our 87 walkabout did, um, even with the winter liner. I remember when we were looking at switching from the walkabout to this, uh, they don't have a winter liner option for this tent and I was really concerned about that because the boys were going to be up here by themselves. and. Um, 
I would say that this tent without the winter liner, it holds heat comparable to the 87 with the winter liner. So that's not a concern for me anymore. The only thing that I don't love about this particular setup compared to the 87 is that the windows do not have that cover that goes over the outside. You don't have that like dome type cover like the front of this does. So if it is raining or inclement weather, these two side windows absolutely do have to be closed. Otherwise you're going to get wet. Um, that's the only thing that I don't love about the wedge style tents, but that's just wedge style tents across the board. So the boys really mm -hmm. like this mattress compared to the other one that we had. Um, I love the fact that underneath this mattress, there is a, what's it called? Condensation. A mat. condensation mat. Um, so it's this mesh mat that has a lot of really good airflow through it. So this one has the mesh mat, which we really like because it allows that airflow and since we're in this all the time, condensation does happen. Um, and that helps eliminate the mold that can happen underneath mattresses. There is also the, this rectangle up here is a vent. Um, and that is always open. So even when you close all the windows, there is airflow through here, which is good. As you can see right here, there is a bar that goes all the way from the roof down to the base of the tent. It's like a tension rod, so a slip fit, a slip fit tension rod. And so they want you to have it installed. They like you to have it installed all the time. Um, from what I understand, it's mainly for if it's super windy. That way the tent can't have the chance to um, collapse down on top of you while you're in it. Uh, the struts do hold up the tent completely by themselves. So it's not there for any structural thing. It's just so that the wind doesn't plop it back down on you if the wind's strong enough. It's an extra security measure. So uh, that has been a good thing for us because we have a tendency to not put our tent down when it gets super, super windy. So let's talk about how it performs in the wind because that is a big deal for rooftop tents. Uh, so we've camped on hurricane cliffs in Utah and uh, they have that name for a reason. So against the wedge so going towards sure. so going towards the hinges so like this the wedge is like this and the wind is coming this way we've been in sustained 65 with no problems then when we went to hurricane cliffs we were in sustained 103 we had no problems and it wasn't trying to push the tent down or nothing and we even had this top flap up and while this was flapping around, we just hooked it around one of the poles. Um, we actually had no issues. However, the winds there shift at night and we were not aware of that. And so we woke up to the trailer shaking very badly because the 100 mile an hour winds had turned 180 degrees. So they were blowing straight into the mouth. While the tent was fine and the struts were fine and the fabric and everything was fine because the tent is attached to the trailer, you can imagine having that big of a sail on the top of the trailer and how bad it was violently shaking the trailer. The thing for us is if you remember earlier, I told you we don't have the ladder on here. We just have six tires on the ground because we have the ladder built into the trailer. All I did was I got up out of the trailer, I went to the car, I started it up, I spun the trailer in a 180, and we were good to go. So that's why we do it this way. Uh, we can move at a moment's notice. It takes a couple seconds to move it. Once we turn the trailer back into the wind, uh, we had no problems with the tent whatsoever. Um, closing it and opening it in wind is very easy, very simple, and it's very controlled. So absolutely would recommend this tent to anybody who's looking 
Uh, if you've seen our video, if you've seen our videos on any of the other 230 products, you can compare them side by side with these other products. We've been out here with many other people with rooftop tents, other brands, other hard shells. And when you really start looking at the stuff, you can tell that there's a quality difference for sure. Um, yes, uh, 230 tents are not cheap, but uh, you can buy them to last and have a company that stands behind them. Or you can decide to try to save some money and you get what you get. You definitely get what you pay for when it comes to rooftop tents. So we will put our link to 230 down below. We have been working with them for a while. It's an affiliate link we have with 230. So they've been working with us for a while. So every time you click that to buy your 230 products, uh, it helps us out. So we appreciate you guys that are already doing that. Um, we also have their 270 awning, their Paragon 270 awning. Uh, that as well has been standing up. Um, we can have that stand up 35 mile an hour. Uh, anything over 35, we do put the orange tie downs. And with the orange tie downs, we've been 65 plus with the awning out. Um, I know that it's not recommended to do that, but sometimes we're in places where the wind just sneaks up out of nowhere and here it is. So better it it's better, it's better to leave it up than try to bring it down and have something break. So we love our 230 products. They're very easy. Our boys can set them up and take them all down. That's the awning and the tent. We absolutely love them. If you have any questions about the 230 Kabari, the hard shell rooftop tent, we full time. So we have tested this thing to the max. Um, we check in with the manufacturer. Um, we check in with Justin and Wayne often about how the tent's doing, how the awnings are doing, and any feedback we give them, uh, we have good conversations around that. So let us know what you think. Uh, we love this stuff. Thank you for watching this video. We are on to the next adventure.